Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but we didn't finish the Sir Al Jathiyah. We, we did not finish Al Jathiyah. Tafsir, Tafsir. Since, since uh, we started late, so let's start Tafsir straight, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. يا الله in the beginning of this class we seek your شفاء to the father of sister Shamil he is not feeling well may Allah give him شفاء may Allah give him شفاء may Allah give him شفاء also sister Azlas Haji Anwar, uh, Auntie Sharifa, may Allah give them good health, all of them. Anyone who is not feeling good, inshallah. Habib, hey, Habibullah, again? Mm. May Allah grant Shifa to Idris also for his finger. Amin, Ya Rabbi. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. May Allah accept uh, the, the fasting of those who fasted. And may Allah accept the, those who ate with them as well. Takbir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We stopped at وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ بَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ فَمَخْتَلَفُوا إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْعِلْمُ بَغْيًا بَيْنَهُمْ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ يَقْضِي بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فِي مَا كَانُوا فِيهِ يَخْتَرِفُونَ And then we talked about Sharia. Verse 18. Everybody. That's where we start. Verse 18. ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاكَ عَلَى شَرِيعَةٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْرِ فَاتَّبِعْهَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ So, I stopped with you last week at this uh, comment that I made. Unfortunately, there is a huge attack now on Islam from within. <coughs> Long time ago, when the enemies of Islam used to attack Islam, they were outside the Ummah. And they talk bad about Islam, or they invade, they try to invade, and the Muslims fight back jihad. Today, no. We have enemies of Islam inside us, living with us, speaking our language, eating our food, wearing our clothes. And these are the most dangerous type of enemies. One of these comments I, I heard with my own ears and watched on TV, in Tunisia, Somebody, so-called thinker, debating, and he made a mockery of himself. Because on TV, he was telling the news presenter who, was, who brought an Islamist, and he brought uh, this uh, person who was attacking Islam, and the Islamist was just listening to him. He, he didn't interrupt him at all. When he finished, he said, you said you read the whole Quran, and you didn't find one single word about Sharia. He said, if I read for you an ayah now and show it to you, which surah, which even line, not just, would you apologize at least to the listeners for misguiding them? He said, no, there is no ayah. He said, did you read the whole Quran? He said, yes, I read the whole Quran. Then he showed him this verse. He said, you said there is no word sharia. Here is the word sharia in the Quran. What would you say now? But of course, these people are so arrogant, they will take the debate somewhere else. But alhamdulillah, people now see with their own eyes and hear with their own ears that these people will, will debate with you even with jahl. Because they are arrogant now, Billah. So let's start. ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاكَ عَلَى شَرِيعَةٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ يَلَّهَا نَسْرٍ First ayah, 18. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ah. ثم جعلناك على شريعة من الأمر. We have put you, O Muhammad, on a plain way of our commandment. So you see the word Sharia, what it means? Plain commandment of Allah. Unfortunately, the word Sharia now, especially the Westerners when they took it, the word Sharia and Jihad, they, they take them out of context. So Sharia is what? Hudud law. While it is not Hudud law, 
It's more than that. Yes, hudud law is part of sharia. But it's not that. That's the last thing. That's what, like when you build a nice house and you need to put fence around it. The fence is hudud law. But the sharia is everything. So the deen of Allah is sharia. Allah said, oh Muhammad, we have put you, you yourself. We commanded you to follow the sharia. What should you do? Fattabi'ha, follow it. Do you know the strongest command in Quran is what Allah tells Muhammad Sallallahu to do? Do you know that or not? For example, Allah said, Ya ayyuhal nabiyyu, jahidil kuffar. O Prophet, jahid the kuffar. Do jihad against the kuffar. What does it mean? By himself? Is it logical that a man goes and fight all the kuffar by himself? It's command to him and his ummah, although he is mentioned by himself. Here when Allah says, follow the sharia of Muhammad, it's not just for him. For those who say, Muhammadun Rasulullah. Those who, who they, when they make shahada, like you and me, they say, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammadun Rasulullah. So Allah says, follow it. The highest form of command in Arabic is when Allah tells the Prophet to do something. Because he is the role model, the example. So following the Sharia is good, but not, not good enough. Huh? Shaykh, what are you saying? Following the Sharia is good, but not good enough. Let me see how your works, how your minds, uh, if they tickle you or not. Following the Sharia is very good, but it's not good enough. There is another thing. Look at it, look at it. Next. Don't follow your desires. There is no point you build and destroy at the same time. You're building a wall the whole day, and then afternoon you destroy it. That's how some of us are. We try to follow the, the Islamic law, but at the end we go follow our desires. We cannot let go our desires. So our desires are against the Sharia. You, you need to know this. So in order to be really a good Muslim, you need to follow the Sharia and not follow your desires. So there is to follow and not follow at the same time. Because how can you finish building a house when at the end of the day, you always destroy what you build? Look at the ayah. Don't look at me, look at it. Allah said, and do not follow the desires of those who do not know. Most people, when they give you things, they really give them out of jahl, jahl, and ignorance. They don't know. That's why today you see the so-called sisters in Islam and whoever talking about Islam and, and as if they are muftis. Really. When you don't know them, when you never see them, and you think these are muftis talking. Very bad. Don't follow their desires, Allah said. Because they are speaking out of ignorance. So please understand, we are not commanded just to follow the sharia of Allah, but to also stay away from the desires of people, especially Oran Jahil. Oran Jahil, they will give you things based on their opinion, not based on a sound dalil. Huh? This is why the Ummah is weak now. Not only the Sharia is not practiced, but what do we practice? Desires of people who don't know. The ayah is in front of us, my brothers and sisters. Show it to people. SubhanAllah, it's very true. The Sharia, people make fun of it. Na'udhu Billah. And you know, whoever makes fun of Sharia, he becomes kafir. He needs to make shahada again. He needs to declare himself Muslim again. Anyone who makes fun of Udhiyah, like Eid now, Udhiyah, start talking fun about Kambing Biri Biri, da, 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 da. he is actually making fun of a symbol of Allah. One of the symbols of Allah is Udhiyah. You don't want to do it between you and Allah, but to make fun of it is a major sin. 
So, please understand, my brothers and sisters, we are living in a time where people now, not only the Sharia is frozen, we have frozen all the laws of Sharia, but actually when you go and see what people are following, they have their desires. Who can give you an example? An example where people don't practice Sharia in one, in one uh, and then instead you see them following their desire. Okay. They say somebody who says cutting hand is barbaric. Okay, and then what do they do? So they they have frozen this law. What do they do for the thief? They feed him well and they give him gymnasium to become more Huh? And what? Yeah, haircut. Haircut, makan, three times a day. The thief that sto has stolen all your money, they're going to feed him well under human rights. So follow these idiots who don't know. Huh? Then when he comes out next time, he will not steal 10,000. He will steal a bank. He will rob a bank. Because he met other criminals more than him. And they taught him how. See? Good. Good example. Very good. Another example. In marriage. In marriage. Only four pillars for marriage. Ijab Kabul. The Wali. Two witnesses. And Dawri. The less it is, the better. So many Muslims don't practice this, but would, what do they practice? They add? Hantaran. <laughs> ah, what else? The boy and the girl have to sit together in front of the whole world. Hey, they don't have to. Did I see you sitting with your wife to know that she's your wife? No, I never saw you. I saw you with her walking to your car. Hala, that's the wife of brother. Lat. Full stop. No, you have to bring them like I don't know who. Poor people. Make them the girl about to faint. Huh, Idris? That's what is going to be done to you. Get ready. Takmir. Many things, just follow desires. Okay, rice, Allah gave it to us for what? Makan. Makan, why you put it on the hand of the boy and the girl? Adhan, Adhan. Terima kasih, Haji Anwar. Terima kasih. Bagus, bagus.
در حالا با لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آتي سيدنا محمدا الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة العالية الرفيعة وبعث مقاما محمودا الذي وعدته إنك لا تخلف الميعاد رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا ورسولا the examples are so many, my brothers and sisters, so no need to give, but it's, subhanAllah, Allah doesn't only command us to follow the Sharia, but also to stay away from the desires, the desires, the opinions based on desires of those who are ignorant, because it's like a big number in, uh, in math times zero. So even if we, look, subhanAllah, even if we practice sharia and end up following the desires of those who don't know, we are just harming ourselves. So the sharia and stay away from the opinions of those who don't, want, who don't, who don't know. And who is worse than, than a kafir in not knowing? You follow kafir, you follow Americans and the Isra so-called Israelis and British about your economy, they will never. Well, one thing you need to know about Oran Kafir, sisters and brothers, do you think the West wants the Muslims to be healthy, to be educated, to be uh, self-sufficient? If we become self-sufficient, if we become healthy and educated, do you think we will need them? So they want us always to be in need of them and healthy so that we keep going to their hospitals, and uh, give them uh, the millions and buy their medicine also. They want us to be uneducated so that we will never re pass a level of technology. We'll always buy their products, their iPhones, their cars, their airplanes. And uh, also disunited so that tomorrow we keep buying their weapons. This is it. While Allah is commanding us to follow the Sharia, ah, which will make us united, healthy, strong, technologically advanced. N never mind, we were the masters of the world for 10 centuries, 11 centuries. Never forget it. The West is 200 years uh, in leadership. That's all. Needs nine more centuries to pass us, and they cannot. Yes. Sure. Very good. Very good. N number one, is the Sharia a set of rules that will never change? Or is it more than that? The Sharia is the laws of Allah in Quran and Sunnah. The Sharia is perfect. The fiqh is not. I repeat. The Sharia is what Allah said and what His Rasul said. Therefore, it's perfect. But the fiqh, the understanding of the Sharia, that's why we have, we Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we have four major schools of fiqh Abu Hanifa, Malik, Al Shafi'i, and Ahmad bin Hanbal. 
rahimahullah. These four, they use, it's called fiqh. Fiqh is what? It's applying the Muslim mind with the text, with the sharia. So the sharia is perfect. The Muslim mind might not. So when I apply my mind to understand certain things, I may make mistakes. So the sharia is a set of rules that will never change. It will never change. But the fiqh changes. Applying the sharia may change. From, for example, I give you an example. Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu anhu. When there was famine, he did not cut the, hand, the, the hands of uh, people who were stealing. There was famine. There was a year of drought. So people started stealing just to eat. He told all his governors, do not cut off the hands. Until drought is over and until khalas, the economy is okay. So here, he, here you see, here it doesn't mean he has stopped. He delayed it. He did not stop it forever. He delayed it because there is a reason why people are stealing. He even said to his governors, Rotan, the rich who don't help. This is the fiqh. The sharia is still there. If a thief steals, we cut his hand. But not when he is stealing for food to Makan. Because there is need. There is need. He said, actually, you should punish the rich people who are not helping. Punish them by rotaning them. So this is the fiqh. Another, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, the Sharia said, give the, the land, the land, the land, when the Muslims open the land, the Mujahideen take it. Umar, radiallahu anhu, when they went to Iraq, he said, no, I will not give the land to the Mujahideen. The reason, if he gives them because it's very fertile, jihad would stop at Iraq. It will never go to Iran and it will never come here. Because, khalas, you gave me land. And very fertile. So he, he kept it under, under state, very good, not under individuals. And like desert land. If I give you a piece of land in the desert. Now, but those days, huh, you see, that's the fiqh. So the text is still there, but how to apply it? Now, Hanafi will come and give you an opinion about this. Alhamdulillah, no problem. But are we going to change the cutting of the hand? Never. Are we going to change the number of rotan for somebody who commits zina while he's not married or she's not married? Never. But can we not use it for a certain period because it's too cold? We are afraid that we may uh, lead to death because the weather is cold. Ah, you think everybody, everybody's weather is like Malaysia, mashallah? Some people might understand, mister. So go and do. By the time you, before you even hit the first one, is dead. Because need jacket. So things like that. This is where the fiqh comes. The second question? Mm. Ah, very good. Very good. If, if I use my own intellect for something and I get it right, is that okay? It's the Quran that tells us, use your intellect. No, desire is not intellect. Desire is nafsu, shahwa. Is nafsu. Shahwa is not only sexual. Shahwa is also, um, for example, um, you, see, you see very expensive uh, phone, iPhone. And you want to buy it. You desire it. So desire. Shahwa is desire. Shahwa of food, makan, you are full, but you want to try this cake. Like some of you, mashallah, already full, but add second plate. Takmir, first plate, khalas, fill you up. No, sheikh, the food is very tempting. So desire is not intellect. Ah using the intellect where there is no need for the intellect. That is wrong. For example, Iman. How does the Prophet go up in the sky? It does not make sense. Here, you are using the intellect where it's not supposed to be. It's like you are using screwdriver 
instead of, I don't know, a wrench. You need a wrench here, not the screwdriver. The screwdriver, the mind, you use it for dunya, not for akhirah, not for iman. Iman is metaphysics, while uh, dunya is physics. So like, like trying to do surgery with uh, mechanic tools. It's not going to work, no matter how ikhlas you have, how much ikhlas you have. So the intellect, when we use it for the sake of Allah, no problem. There is nothing wrong with it. If we get it right, two rewards. Because ishtihad, you did ishtihad and you got it right. If you did your best and you got it wrong, you have one, one reward. Huh? Not sinful, no, no. No sin, inshallah. No sin. Continue, Sister Farina. The next ayah, 19. Very good. One thing, brothers and sisters, the people of uh, evil, people of uh, wrong, they get together. Have you seen, for example, when America wanted to invade Iraq, how many people went with them? Although America can invade the whole world by themselves. You know that or not? You need to know this. America can destroy the world 12 times. The military power of the United States is no joke. You need to know your enemy and respect it if you want to win. Don't say, no, nothing. They are not nothing. They are something. So, it's like this. Uh, the kuffar always come together. The people of wrong, they always come together. The people of truth, like you and me, always disunited. Always disunited. I remember when they wanted to invade Iraq, first time, 91, they t George Bush, the father, took with him 33 other nations. Desert storm, if you remember this uh, desert storm. 33 other countries. Same thing when they wanted to go to Afghanistan. Same thing when they want to go to Iraq second time. So subhanAllah, here it is. Allah said, إِنَّهُمْ لَنْ يُغْنُوا عَنْكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا O oh Muhammad, if you follow their desires, if you leave the Sharia and don't follow it, then this kuffar can avail nothing against Allah Yawm Al Qiyamah. They can avail you nothing. They, can, they will not help you on the Day of Judgment when Allah tells you you are in trouble. So why did you listen to them? Why did you listen to them? Remember that, please. Quran Kafir have no friends. Their friends is their their interests. If their interests shift somewhere else, they leave you. Remember the Shah of Iran. Never forget what the Shah of Iran did for, for uh, the Americans. And at the end, they didn't even allow his plane to land for medical treatment. Terima kasih. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran. Jazilan. Shukran, bismillah. Clear, inshallah? Please remember that. They don't have friends. No, Shaykh, they are my friends. They are not your friends. They may play with your golf, but they are not your friends. Trust Allah, don't trust them. Don't trust even yourself. You doubt yourself, but don't doubt Allah. He said, O oh Muhammad, if you obey them, O oh Muslims, if you obey them, they will not avail anything against you, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Meaning they will, they will just say, sorry, we told you and you followed us. Then Allah said, وَإِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ Look at it. Verily the Zalimun, the polytheists, the wrongdoers, are awliya, they are help, helpers of one another. They help one another, but they will not help you. So when you see a Muslim being helped 
by non-Muslims. What does that mean? He is one of them. He's just bluffing you with the way he looks. When you see so-called Muslim supported by non-Muslims and protected and, and, and defended, don't think the ayah is wrong. You should know that this guy is pretending to be Muslim, while in reality he's not. He may be wearing like us. Oh, I see. Sheikh, you told us the kuffar we never help a Muslim. How come they are protecting that uh, leader over there in the Middle East? Because he's one of them. He's just a hypocrite. Pretending to wear like us and oh, dash dash and careful. Allah speaks the truth. I may see something and say maybe my eyes are wrong. If Allah is telling me something, I trust Allah, not my eyes. What's the proof that you should not trust your eyes? Mirage. Mirage in the, in the, in the desert. In the day when it's too hot. What do you see? Water. Go there. Your eyes are telling you water, but it's not water. Huh. I see. The moon, if you do like this, you think the moon is this, this much. Sheikh, I took my ring out. The moon is exactly the size of my... We send you there. Huh. So, subhanAllah, do, go by what Allah says. Because even your eye can trick you sometimes. Really, can trick you. The evidence is what? Another evidence of the trick of the eye. Sihr. Magic. I do like this. Tap, tap, tap. I bring you a dove, a white dove. And you think, wow. Children, they like it. Because they don't know the tricks. Huh. But in reality, it's, it's not. The dove was somewhere else. Okay. Walking on water. He's walking on glass. Sheikh, I saw somebody walking on his swimming pool. That's glass. La ilaha illallah. Even, uh, what's her name? The queen of Sheba, Balqis, she got tricked. Because when she saw that, she, she, she thought it was water, but it was glass. Meaning Sayyidina Sulaiman salam had advanced technology compared to her. She didn't know there was glass. In her kingdom, the glass, even if it existed, it wasn't transparent. So today, 